Are you a busy executive who is always on the go? Do you sacrifice sleep if you're in a position of leadership because you're always thinking about work? Well, according to the government of Canada, you wouldn't be alone if you felt this way. One and two adults have trouble going to or staying asleep. One in five adults do not find their sleep to be refreshing. And one in three adults have trouble staying awake during waking hours. Riley Jarvis is on a mission to help executives and business owners skyrocket their performance by optimizing their sleep. Jarvis owns a company called The Sleep Consultant, where he works with executives and other people from all walks of life to help them optimize their sleep by utilizing scientific lab testing. He joined me this week to have a conversation all about sleep and how we can wake up feeling refreshed to reach the full peak of our true professional and personal potential. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. program and I'm excited to talk to you all about your uh, business journey. Great to see you this morning and, and thank you so very much for being here. My pleasure. So Riley, I want to know all about uh, what you do for a living. I know that you help people uh, in, in a variety of ways, but I'm wondering if you can give me a 360 degree view of all the great work that you do. Yeah, definitely. So for a couple of years now, a few years, I've been on the sleep, the whole sleep journey for about 10 years myself. And over the last three years, I have an organization called the Sleep Consultant. And we help high performers, including, you know, entrepreneurs, CEOs, executives to really improve their sleep in order to upgrade their productivity, their performance throughout the day. So when you get better sleep, it leads to a, a myriad of, of benefits in, in your life. So with a lot of our clients, they're able to make an eight-hour workday into a four-hour workday. They can cut out caffeine. They can just have way a lot more mental clarity, acuity, memory. They're just sharper, and they're able to function a lot better throughout the daytime. And we use a lot of different protocols. We have different programs, and we send lab test kits to our clients' houses to see where the biomarkers are off. And we really like to get to the root cause of what the issue is instead of just addressing it on a symptom level. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that the work that you do affects your clients in every aspect of their life in terms of the psychology of every aspect of their life. So I'm wondering if you uh, can dive into that for me this morning. Absolutely. Yeah. So sleep and psychology are huge and they go hand in hand. And if somebody is not sleeping well and they're not getting the most restful uh, REM sleep, especially they're not going to be waking up feeling as sharp um, a couple of different parts of the brain. So one part is the emotional part of our brain, and that's our amygdala and our different emotional processing centers inside of the brain. How that manifests in your waking hours, though, is maybe you're a manager of somebody and you want to be able to effectively manage relationships and your emotional intelligence. If you're not sleeping as well, you're not going to have the ability to, to, to be able to do it um, as at your most effective state, as well as um, having people mental performance with all of, um, you know, the tasks that you're doing throughout the day, it just goes on and on from there. So that's, that's kind of scratching the surface. If that makes sense. Very cool. And tell me, Riley, where does your individual passion for the work that you do come from, buddy? I'm curious. Yeah. So my journey all started, like I said, 10 years ago, um, I was having a lot of 
health issues back in the day. And I was working in finance. That's what I, what I originally went to school for. Turned out I had to drop out of my job. Um, and just, I was accumulating piles of debt because I wasn't able to work just because my stomach was killing me. I had constant brain fog, constant fatigue. I was bedridden for days at times. Um, turned out I had Crohn's disease. And so sort of since then, it's kind of been just this, me taking my health into my own hands. Um, you know, that was spending hours of research, um, studying all this stuff, uh, getting certifications, talking with some of the best doctors in the world. And I was able to through all that to really fix my own biology to where now doctors say my Crohn's is in 100% remission. Um, and they don't really know why I've, you know, I've seen multiple specialists, but the, the important thing is I've really been able to reduce that inflammation inside of my body primarily through sleep. Because once I was able to fix my sleep and get that dialed in, all these other things started to fall into place and alignment. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that having your Crohn's disease in remission. And anybody who can uh, put, put up with numbers and math has my respect there, Riley. So congratulations on that, buddy. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. And, and I know, Riley, that you don't really believe in the traditional way of, uh, of staying awake when it comes to drinking coffee and, and, and taking sleeping pills to fall asleep. So I, I'm wondering... Uh, if you can explain that philosophy for me and why you feel that way. Yeah, definitely. So it, first of all, coffee is really good. It, it, there's so many different benefits, you know, antioxidant benefits, a anti-cancer benefits. It just goes on and on from there. It becomes an issue for people when they're too stressed and they're having like, you know, three to four cups of coffee a day to the point where they're not able to get to sleep because what ca caffeine's doing is it's increasing a lot of your stress hormones in your body, cortisol, adrenaline, and there's a few more. And if your body's already in a stressed out state and you're using caffeine to compensate um, for that fatigue that you're having, when really you should address it from the root cause instead of just masking those tired symptoms with a stimulant, then you can just feel a, a more clean, a cleaner, long-term sustainable source of energy. With sleeping pills, that's always between them and their doctor, but sleeping pills do have a myriad of side effects and you can't really take that for the long term. Um, and the science actually shows it doesn't really improve your, the quality of your sleep and your REM sleep. It, it may look like it's similarly to alcohol where it, it sedates you, but it doesn't actually improve the quality of all those deep REM cycles that your body needs if you'll completely restore the next day. Fantastic. And tell me, I know you have a, a new age of sleep, a new model that you want people to ad ad adopt when we look at sleep. So I'm wondering if you can tell me about it, buddy. Definitely. Yeah. So the new age model of sleep is one where it's not addressing first, it's two parts. So one of them is it's not addressing sleep at the symptom level. So we covered in the previous question, which was coffee, any stimulants, sleeping pills, alcohol to get to sleep. And that's sort of what mainstream thinks, which, which isn't a problem. It's just a lot of people know, don't know the, the, the benefit of when you get a better sleep, what can actually happen. And sometimes you just need a taste of that, of what actually happens. The other part is, is it's way more than just, you need eight hours of sleep. Um, you need to have sleep in a blackout, a room with, with no uh, blue light coming in. You need to minimize your blue light exposure. It goes a lot deeper than that with all these different systems inside of your body. It can be related to your, a lot of your hormones, which is related to your thyroid and your different glands in your body, your gut even, which is your second brain, which is actually where 90% of your serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter to keep your mind calm um, in order to help you sleep. So that's just one of at least a hundred different connections that sleep plays a pivotal role in. And then when you're able to sleep better, a lot of these hormones will start to come um, into alignment and then Within the day, it feels better. You feel less stressed in the day. And then that facilitates better sleep because now you're less stressed and it just goes on and on from there. Absolutely. And then, Riley, one of the passages that I have is creating diversity, equity, and inclusion for individuals with disabilities as I was born with uh, cerebral palsy. But so one of the questions I always like to ask entrepreneurs such as yourself such as yourself is how do you think we can create an atmosphere and environment for better diversity, equity, and inclusion for individuals with disabilities to succeed in business, buddy? Absolutely. That's such an important topic. Um, I, I have a lot of friends who um, have quite a bit of disabilities. Um, and I have, a, I know a couple of people with cerebral palsy 
So, well, you it, can add it, me to the list. That's right. Yeah, we can go down the list here. And what's really important, I think, is awareness is always number one for people to understand. So just through having these conversations and these initiatives that you're doing, I think that's always a really important first step. But I think it's really having empathy for people and understanding where they're coming from. And I'm glad now through all, through the power of the internet, more people are becoming aware of this and we do have more sympathy on on a societal level um, and less people sometimes stuck in their own world. And when we share these kinds of stories, I think that's where, you know, true really being able to understand people and appreciating people for, for who they are, despite whatever background or whatever um, place they may come from um, really is. So I think, I think, like I said, it's all based on awareness and education. Well, yeah, absolutely. You have to meet people where they are, right? Absolutely. And I know John, this falls into the 14.2% of Canadians, according to the National Ski Council, who enjoy participating in skiing and snowboarding as a recreational activity, as a way to let their hair down after work. We took some time to explore deeper his passions outside of the office. Definitely. Yeah. So now that winter's coming and up here in Canada, especially snowboarding is going to be a big one, which I can't wait to hit the slopes. That'll be huge. Um, and then the other thing I do on the side is copywriting. So I write a lot of uh, writing for businesses to help them sell their products. In particular, I have a website called Biotech Copy. I write for biotech companies and sort of what the goal is, I'm into the sleep. I'm into really being able to hack the human body and the health and everything else that comes with it. And then on the biotech side of things, there's so many new cool innovations that's happening within genetics, um, being able to live longer and just everything that all these, a lot of these venture capitalists are coming in towards these huge initiatives. And if you just look at the frontier of what's actually happening right now, it's so fascinating to me. So I can't wait what's going to evolve in sort of, you know, the next 10, 15, 20 years, because technology is just going exponentially faster than the previous, you know, 10, 15 years. But besides that, I love to read, working out. Um, got two dogs. Uh, all my family is here. I'm originally from Vancouver, but my immediate family is here. So I have three younger brothers. Uh, we like to hang out quite a bit. And uh, yeah, it definitely, um, everything together with the sleep business too, definitely keeps me busy. And with Christmas uh, just over three weeks away, are you done your Christmas shopping yet, buddy? I have, yeah. I usually like to get my Christmas shopping done on the Black Friday, so you get the really good deals, and then it's all done with a month in advance, so it's all done now. A different kind of adrenaline rush, huh? <laughs> That's just it. And tell me, Riley, I'm always curious when I talk to Canadians to ask them, in your opinion, buddy, what's the best part about being Canadian? The best part about being Canadian, I think, is that I found is when I've traveled to other countries, everybody just loves Canadians. Like there's no everyone just has open arms for Canadians. But being within Canada, I just I love the people. I, I love how it's so multicultural. I love how we're accepting of so many different um People who come inside, it's just like we were saying before, you just have to accept people of where their background is, where they're from, where they are. And I think being in Canada really gives you that opportunity. And just me, myself, especially in my line of work of working with clients locally, I deal with all kinds of people, different ages, different races, different backgrounds. And you just learn so much from them. So it's pretty enriching. And tell me, Riley, I'm wondering if you have any non-negotiables to happiness. And what I mean by that is... Th is there something that you won't compromise in order to achieve your own individual happiness? Yeah, for me, it's it's always been my morning routine. I will never go a day without doing my, my ideal morning routine because without that, my day doesn't start off right and I can't follow the process of things that I want to do. So that always involves doing a quick to-do list, following that to-do list, just putting things on paper because once I put it onto paper, I can forget about it. And all I have to do is just execute on those steps um, and really making it systematic. So it's really that sometimes I'll do intermittent fasting. Um, I get kind of geeky with some things. I have red light therapy, doing sauna, going to the gym, yoga. It's always kind of one of these things. I have like a list of 10 and I'll choose one for that day, whatever feels right. And then I'll 
I'll execute on it. But morning routine is just so important for me um, because it really allows you to execute uh, for the rest of the day. And that's what I recommend clients do as well. A lot of people think to sleep better, it's all about the evening routine, but it's actually the morning routine is equally as important because it sets your circadian rhythm um, and into alignment. So it tells your body when it's time for bedtime too. And it's all related to your hormones and neurotransmitters and everything else. And there's nothing wrong with, with a little bit of rhythm and routine in your life, huh? Exactly. Hey, Riley, my final question for you is I'm wondering if you've given any thought to how you want your personal or professional legacy to be defined. That's a really good question. My So my legacy uh, with the, the whole sleep business, um, it's, I've designed it and I've planned everything out in the vision for that to be for the rest of my life. And I find that there's not a lot of awareness sort of around it. So I really want to be defined of being able to help people as much as possible, especially in an area of sleep where it's not really understood. People know a lot about exercise and diet and they see the importance of it, but they usually just put sleep aside where they think, you know, you just close your eyes, you open your eyes and you're good to go for the day. But it's so much deeper than that, especially the science is sort of in its infancy stages and they're just showing more and more stuff coming out, um, which I think is, is just truly fascinating. So as I continue on this journey myself, I wanted to be able to help so many other people with their health um, in the same way that I was able to, to fix myself and my health, even though I was in extreme circumstance, most people who weren't in, you know, sort of a, an extreme state that I was, it's that much easier for them to fix it themselves too. And a lot, a lot faster than they, they can even realize. So yeah, that's my. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, finally, buddy, tell me if uh, people want to get connected with you, what's the best way they can do that? Definitely. They can go to www.thesleepconsultant.com. Inside of there, you can book a free sleep assessment if you like, and you can also download on there a free um, website um, sleep um, questionnaire where you can just answer a series of questions. You can see where the holes are within your sleep, what you're doing well, and exactly what you can do to sleep better starting tonight. Well, uh, I want to thank you for your uh, time, energy, and efforts in the space, buddy, and for joining me this morning and taking some time to engage in conversation with me. It's most appreciated. Thank you so much, Kevin. Really appreciate it.